Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a bunch of brand new link methods coming in .NET 9 that aim to make even more operations easier for us. Now, link has been around for a very long time and it's one of my favorite features in C Sharp. It makes so many things so much easier. It does get a bit of criticism because of its performance, but ultimately what you gain in productivity is way more important in most cases. Plus, ever since .NET 7, it has gotten significant performance improvements. So in this video, I'm going to show you what those methods are. And I've already installed .NET 9 Preview 2 on my machine. So everything you're going to see is with hands-on examples. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. For more training, check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Okay, so let's see what I have here. I have a simple .NET 9 console application. And as you can see over here, everything is in .NET 9. I have the preview installed. Um, and what I'm going to start with is a very interesting method. Now, many things in link, and just for the sake of this argument, let's create a, a simple enumerable with a, a simple range over here. So the moment you say count, for example, you have this count method, you have things like aggregate, then you have things like max or min, but you also have in the example of max and min, max by or min by a specific property. So not only can you get the maximum or minimum value in an enumerable based on the type of the enumerable, but you can also say, for example, min by over here, and then you can take that value of the enumerable and try to get the minimum based on some calculation or some sub property or a method result or anything. Now, one of those methods in C sharp is like I said, the count method. Count can give you the count in a collection, but it can also give you the count by a specific property or specific value. So here's an example. Let's say we have lorem ipsum over here, just the first sentence or the first few sentences actually. Uh, and we want to calculate what is the most occurring word in that sentence. Now, spoiler alert is amet, which I don't know what it means. It is Latin. But let's say we want to write something with link that calculates that or gives us the count of that value. Well, what I can say is var most frequent word. And I can say source text. Then I can split that by all the delimiters, which is the space, the comma, and the dot. So I'm going to just use these delimiters and remove any empty entries. Then I'm going to use select and I'm going to say to lower invariant, to lower every single word so I can sort of normalize them in, in a way. And then I can say count by. And what do I want to count by? Well, I want to count by that word. And what does that give me back? Well, if I was to show you the type over here, what I'm going to get is an enumerable of a key value pair with strings and integers. Let's just quickly run this to see what we get back. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Getting Started with Modular Monoliths in .NET. And it's authored by the legend Steve R. Dallas Smith. I'm sure Steve has taught many of you already with courses on other platforms like Pluralsight, but now he authored his first of many courses on Dome Train. And it's all about how to get started with modular monoliths. Not only will he teach you the theory behind the concept and how it compares to microservices or traditional monoliths, but he will also build a whole system in that course, hands-on with code and diagrams and examples and you can follow along. It is an amazing course and it is the best way to get started with modular monoliths hands down in .NET. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount. So either use a link in the description or apply code modular at checkout to claim the 20% off. It's a great opportunity to get started with a concept. And I can't stress enough how much of an amazing author Steve is. Now back to the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console.write line. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and just quickly say debug and see what we get back. So if we expand this over here and I move this so you can see it better, then as you can see, we have the word, each individual word, and then we have the number it occurred, which is the count. So in this case, you see Amet is three, Sit is two, uh, Dollar is two, and then Ipsum is one, Lorem is one, and so on. So we're fitting in an enumerable, that in this case, an enumerable of strings, and then we say count by that string, and then give me individual counts per string. This significantly simplifies the way to do this with link. And you can do things like max by, for example, as a chain method. And you can say max by the key, and that will give you a key value pair. And that will ultimately lead to the word being the key. And I can actually also say, let's just use string interpolation here to show this better. So I'm going to say a string interpolation key, and then how many times 
uh, did it occur well most frequent keyword and value so that word occurred this many times and the max buy should be oh wait not the key i wanted max buy the value because the value is the count for a small mistake so if i run this what i'm going to get is amet three times so you can go ahead and, and print it so very convenient method very nice method i really like that we see more and more of those something that existed by a specific parameter it is a very common thing that you would do in C sharp and there were ways to do this beforehand but now it's even easier and this sort of leads me into the next method because I kind of hinted into that the next method is also a something by and it has to do with aggregate you could previously have an enumerable like this one over here let's just quickly uh, copy this again and you could say aggregate and then you could do things with seeds and functions to calculate some things but now you can also say aggregate by and by doing that you can have a key as well you can pass down a key selector as you can see it's, it's a function and then you can aggregate by a function super super nice to have and let's see a practical example of that so i'm going to go with the following example let's say we have some data over here and by the way these examples are taken by microsoft's uh, post on this feature so i'm gonna put the link to that in the description down below so let's say i have this example of data and i want to aggregate this score by its id so zero occurs twice and i want to aggregate that so when i get 42 plus 25 so 67 then one appears twice so five plus 10 five and then id2 appears once so that should be four so what i can do now is i can say data dot aggregate by and there's a couple of overloads we're gonna go first with um, the seed so we're gonna set that as zero then i'm going to say the function to calculate uh, that score, that aggregation algorithm that I need goes as follows. I have the total score over here and I also have the current value. So I'm going to have a lambda here and I can say that the total score is the current value and then take its score and add it into the total. So that's how I'm aggregating that score. That's how it's basically an addition and not a subtraction or any other calculation. And then I can also have both a key comparer and a key selector. I'm going to say key select and I'm going to say that the key for this situation is the ID. So match them by ID. Treat this as the key. Once I have that, the result of this will look as follows. So I'm going to just quickly... Uh, short circuit this i'm gonna run it and let's see what this ultimately gives me back so as you can see if i expand this and i say give me all the results what you're gonna get is 0 67 because we match by key and then we're adding these two values 1 15 and 2 4 exactly as you'd expect very convenient method very nice method glad they added it very simple yet so so powerful for the last method this isn't a something by but it's more of an interesting twist on something that technically was possibly before but it looked very odd and read very odd when you just looked at it without knowing what's going on so let me just quickly give you a demonstration of what that is so let's say i have an enumerable of lines based on this file.txt so i have a bunch of basically strings in an array or an enumerable now let's say i want to print the line number of each value and then the value itself so line one is this value line two is this value line three is this value and i want to print it with a console message so i'm going to say console dot write line and say line number one is that value well technically the way you would do this now is you would say for each and you would say lines dot select and you would do a very interesting selection you would do this you would say line to get the actual line and then you would say index to get the index and if you did that then you could also say line and index so select basically the exact same thing and this would give you the option to get both the value and the index of that value this sort of means that this variable over here if i specify it explicitly looks like this so you have string line and int index it's a bit of a weird one like if you don't know exactly you haven't seen this before it can certainly read weird but if you did that then you can totally do something like this where you have line number is index plus one because again index is zero based and we want to get the line and line starts from one so index plus one and then the line itself and if you were to do something like this and just quickly run it as you're going to see we're going to get every line printed 
over here very, very nicely. Ultimately, what we get in .NET 9 is the following. Instead of having to do this, we can say lines.index. And now I have to reverse this syntax as of .NET uh, 9 preview 2 anyway. So index comes first, line comes second, which kind of makes sense because the method is called index. So you'd expect the index to come before the value. But once you do that and you run it, you're going to get something like this. So same thing as before, same values as before, but now you don't have to do this selection, which looks kind of weird. And that's about it. Those are all the link methods that are coming for now. Now, I'm sure they're going to look into adding more methods and I'm sure they're going to look into improving the performance of existing ones. And those are all things I'm going to cover. So if you don't want to miss any of those, please do subscribe. I always show the brand new C Sharp and .NET features as early as I possibly can. So you have a full idea the way they evolve and the way you can give feedback to improve them. But what do you think? What do you think about all these methods? And what's a link method that you would like to have in .NET? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.